Now, Britain's job market's booming. Wages are rising and there are record job vacancies too, according to new official data published this morning. At the same time, though, the cost of living is surging, as inflation and related price pressures combine with spiralling fuel bills and incoming tax rises. The UK economy is growing. We've avoided the unemployment spike some said lockdown would bring. But if the broad population is to feel better off, wage rises need to outpace our spiralling cost of living. And that doesn't seem to be happening. There's no doubt the jobs market is strong. Employment is now above pre-COVID levels across the UK, with the number of payroll staff hitting 29.5 million last month. That's half a million more than in February 2020, prior to the pandemic. Plus, there are 1.2 million job vacancies, a new record. Having said all that, though, wage growth is slowing and crucially lagging behind inflation. Weekly earnings during September, October and November were 4.2% higher than the same month in 2020, a pretty sharp rise. But, 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 because the latest inflation figures show the Consumer Price Index CPI 5.1% higher in November than the same month the previous year, wages on average are rising by less than prices. And that means actual living standards are falling. In real terms, then, that is after inflation, wages are going down. On top of that, a raft of pre-announced tax rises is set to kick in this April. Plus, fuel bills will be rising sharply in April too. And as the highly respected Joseph Roundtree Foundation has reported today, some of our poorest households will be soon be spending more than half their income on energy. That's why On The Money's been campaigning to scrap the VAT, highlighting the case for removing VAT on domestic fuel bills. That's entirely within the gift of the UK government now we've left the European Union. So today's data shows wages are already rising less than inflation, and that's before more fuel price rises and higher taxes. Plus, many of those 1.2 million job vacancies, well, they'll be in places a long way from where the unemployed live, and available workers may not have the necessary experience or skills. And there's something else, another cost of living increase which today's strong labour market makes more likely. And that's an interest rate rise next month. And that's our On The Money question today. At a time when, despite rising wages, living standards are falling, we're asking, how can the government tackle this cost of living crisis?